Give me a moment. Getting ready to start. You guys know I don't take all day to start. Just one second. One second, please. As you come in, please speak. Say hello, say good morning. Well, good afternoon. Let me know that you're here. And if you don't mind, share this video um, on your pages, please. Uh, we want to get started in just a second. As soon as my laptop, my Wi-Fi is moving really slow in this house today. So we are going to begin in just a moment. There we go. All right, just a second here. second. Okay, so hello to everybody. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Glad to see um, another day um, on here. I am uh, grateful to be back on. It's been a while. Um, I just, you know, I really just didn't want to... Uh, I didn't want to come on a lot, um, even to do self-checkout, because with everything that's going on, you know, um, everybody's been live. All of our churches are live. And, you know, that's that's fine. I mean, I mean because we have to do what we have to do. Um, our churches have to do what they have to do right now. Um, and by having our services streamed on Facebook Live, on Zoom, or, you know, whatever platform you have because of what's happening. And it's really, you know, it's rough, but, you know, it's being done, and we pray that uh, God is getting the glory. Hey, Mom, uh, glad to see you. Thank you for joining um, with us today. Um, yeah, so, you know, it is what it is. We got to do what we got to do um, and carry on. So before I get started with what I'm going to say uh, for a few minutes today, I do want to just solicit everybody's prayers for our churches world, worldwide, churches that, uh, you know, uh, churches are losing their pastors. Uh, I saw this morning when I got up, I saw that there were two pastors uh, from Chicago, here in Chicago, that have lost their lives uh, just overnight. And it's rough, you know, but we really need to be praying for our churches, our pastors, especially our pastors. On our prayer line, my church's prayer line Tuesday night, you know, I implored them, to, let's pray for our pastors and whatever church you're from, you should definitely be praying for your leader um, because they need it 
in these times, right? So I am going to, <laughs> I, you know, I keep up with everything uh, as much as possible. I probably have been watching the news too much, but uh, I, I try to keep up with it. And I just look at, you know, what's being done and the government and all that kind of stuff. It's crazy out there, man. So, you know, I was thinking about how people, um, our, here in Chicago, in Illinois, I was thinking about how our government, um, let me just move this up a little bit. I was thinking about how our government um, have, they have set rules in place and guidelines and laws and regulations and all that stuff. Uh, and you know, we have to abide by them. It's kind of difficult, but we do have to abide by these rules that they've set. And I was laughing to myself and I said, uh, actually, <laughs> I said the other day to somebody, I was like, what would happen if you just went out driving and you ran every red light that you saw? What would happen? Um, and I, I want to know, who, nobody does that. I mean, unless it's something wrong up here, you don't just go, you know, running red lights because you can, because it's true, you can. If you choose to go get in your car right now because you have the ability to drive, if you want to, you can start your car, hit that street, and run every red light you want to. You can do that. That's your right. <laughs> but um, you have to know that there's something going, something's coming behind that, behind you running these lights. Um, hey, uh, Kivia, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you have to know that there's some, something's going to happen behind that, behind you running these red lights. Why? Because it's against the law. Pretty point, pre, pretty. I mean, period, point blank. It's against the law for us to run red lights. And if you run a red light and you get caught, you'll get a ticket, right? Um, but if you keep running lights, you, they, they'll suspend your license, right? Um, and you may go to jail, you know, because just because you can do it, doesn't mean that you should. Um, just because you have the ability, because your car can run, you can drive it. Just because you have the ability to run red lights, you shouldn't do it because you can go to jail. Um, it's against the law. And people could get hurt. People could die because, and that happens when people run red lights and people are crossing the street, people die. Simply because someone ran a red light, they didn't want to stop. They had the ability to stop, but they didn't stop. They disobeyed the law. And it, right, Kivio, you keep getting parking tickets. <laughs> right. So, but my point here is just because you can do something does not mean that you should do it. Um, the Apostle Paul says, in 1 Corinthians, he says, all things are lawful, but not everything is expedient. Just because I can do something doesn't mean that I should do it. I'm not going to get into all that because I'm not here to preach. I just want to drop a few um, uh, pieces of encouragement for you guys. That's right, uh, Keith. If you don't pay him, you're going to go to jail. That's for sure. Hey, uh, Lady Natalie Johnson, my favorite uh, lady, how are you? Um, hey, everybody else that's on. Um, so, yeah, just because you can do something don't mean that you should. Um, you know, we have to obey the law and we have to obey God's word. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes today. 
I just want to really, really talk about the blessings of obedience, because that is something that we don't get much of. And if you guys, if you hear that, the blessings of obedience, give me some thumbs up here, some hearts and type that in the comments, uh, the blessings of obedience. I need your participation uh, today. Um, I want to see that you're engaging with me today. So, the, obviously, you know, you you have children, and when your children are young, especially when they first start walking, um, children are naturally inquisitive. They want to touch stuff. They want to get in the stuff. So you have to, uh, if you know, nowadays they buy the little plastic guards that you put on the outlets in your walls and stuff like that because the babies like to touch things. Um, and you you watch the kids, you watch the babies, and then when they get a little taller, they want to try to touch the stove and you have to tell them, no, nah, uh -uh, stop, stop, hot, that's hot, right? And they'll keep trying to touch it and until eventually you may have to tap that hand to tell them, no, that's hot, I said stop. And when they see how serious you are, you know, they'll either stop it or they'll try to sneak and do it anyway and burn their hand. And that's simply because of disobedience. And they have to learn to be obedient to what you said as their parent. And so it is in the spiritual, first natural, then spiritual. You know, we have to be obedient to our, our parent spiritually our father god we have to be obedient and do the things that he has instructed us to do no we're not going to follow every letter of that bible we're not uh, i don't care who you are i don't care what title you carry you will not follow every letter of that bible uh, but we we try our best to live the bible <laughs> grown folks too right you have to tell grown folks that too that's true we try our best. Um, my head is cut off. Okay. Okay. Maybe I didn't want you to see my head. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we try our best um, to be obedient to God's word. Um, and we have to really, really, in these times, in today's times, we have to really show obedience to God's word. We have to really be obedient because people are watching us. People are watching us who call ourselves Christians. They're watching us. They are uh, paying attention to what we do. They're paying attention to what we say. They're paying attention to how we act. Thank you, everybody that just came in. Thank you for joining. We're talking about the blessings of obedience today. And that people are watching us. So we, we have to be careful that we remain obedient to God in these trying times. Because these are some rough times. And thank you, Sarah, for having me readjust. Uh, we have to make sure that we are obedient to God's word during these rough times because obedience saves lives. Obedience saves lives. Uh, type that in the comments. Obedience saves lives. And that's just the truth of the matter. And uh, I was contemplating about coming live today and I was in my bed and I was uh, I was just thinking about some things that I had saw um, on social media. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be obedient, Sarah. I'm, I'm trying. I was thinking about some things that I had saw on social media and uh, many of you, we keep up with one another on social media and some things had just really, really upset me. Um, honestly, I can just be honest and say that because of everybody in this world, 
there ought to be a unity of Christians in obedience. That's my opinion and mine alone. And I have a right to that opinion. We ought to be unified and obedient to God, um, to God's word, to our pastors, right? And also to the laws of the land. Um, we just ought to, it's just right to do that. Um, the blessings of obedience. Now, as I was laying in my bed, I thought about uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I want to show you something. In Deuteronomy 28, there are 68 verses in Deuteronomy 28. And verses 1 through 14 list, they give you the blessings of obedience. And we all know the, the, our favorite part of that uh, chapter is blessed in the city, blessed in the field, the blessed when I come, blessed when I go, blah, bless, bless, bless. We love that part. Um, and they, the Moses, who was the writer of Deuteronomy 28, he, in the first 14 verses, he lists the blessings of obedience. You've got to know that obedience to God brings blessings. Uh, obedience to God, obedience to your parents, if you're children, um, obedience to your pastors, obedience to uh, the law. God is pleased when we are obedient. And he lists 14 verses um, of blessings that we can enjoy if we are obedient. But then watch this, verses 15 through 68 the rest of that chapter talks about curses if we are not obedient. Wow, 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 wow. Um, that's 14 verses of blessings for obedience. And watch this, 53 verses of curses if we are not obedient. I don't know about you, but I want to live in the fourteen. I want to live in the 14 verses. I want to live in the blessings of obedience. I don't want to live in the, in the curses. I don't want to be cursed. It's 53 verses that talks about curses and only 14 um, talk about blessings. That's right, apostles. I'm so glad that my leaders are on here with us today. Um, we want the blessings of obedience. Absolutely. We want to be obedient and God insists and he shows us in this chapter that he is going to bless us if we are obedient. And that's what we're talking about here, the blessings of obedience. And one thing that I wanted to bring out, uh, one of the blessings of obedience uh, is that obedience brings protection. It brings protection. Um, somebody, if you can, type protection in the comments. Um, uh, uh, obedience brings protection. In Genesis chapter 22, I want to take a look at just a few verses here. Um, we all know the story, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Whereas Abraham was told by God to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. We're talking about the blessings of obedience here. Uh, Abraham, uh, Isaac spake to his father. Once they got to the mountain, uh, the Bible says that Abraham took his son, took some, uh, some men with them, and they journeyed to the mountain. And when they got there, they asked Abraham, hey, where y'all going? And this part blessed me so, man. He, Abraham said to them, he said, me and my son, we're going up to worship, but we'll be back. Did you get that? He said, we, me and my son, we're going to worship. God told me to kill him up there, but we, me and my son, will be back. Man, that thing blessed me every time I read it. So they get up there and Abraham is preparing everything. He is preparing to be obedient to God, to offer up his son. Can you only imagine 
my God, what his heart was feeling as he, he, he had prayed for this son. This was the promised son. Isaac was the promised child. Ishmael came, but he wasn't the promise. Isaac was the promise. And God says, give him up. And as heart-wrenching, my God, as that could have, I, I can imagine as heart-wrenching as that was, Abraham was obedient to God. Uh, uh, obedience brings protection. The scripture says that Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and uh, Abraham said, here am my son. And he said, behold, uh, Isaac says, I, I see the fire, I see the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And we move on down further in chapter 22, and it says that Abraham took his son, and he laid him on the altar upon the wood, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He raised his hand with the knife in his hand to kill his son, and the angel of the Lord called out of heaven unto him and said, Abraham, Abraham, uh, uh, he said, lay not thy hand upon the child. Neither do anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and there he saw a ram in the bush, right? And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which is translated in as God will provide. So that brings... Uh, Obedience brings protection. Protection in this uh, scripture came to Isaac. Isaac was protected because of his father's obedience. Woo! Isaac was protected. The child was protected. I wish somebody would catch this. Your children are protected when you are obedient to God. It's not just about you. It's not just about you. When you're obedient, the blessings trickle down to your children and your children's children. Come on. Your obedience matters. Abraham was obedient to God. And God said, because you're obedient, two things happen. I'll provide for you and I'll protect your son. Lord have mercy. So obedience brings protection. God protected Isaac. Because of his father's obedience. And speaking of provision, Isaiah, uh, obedience also brings provision. Yes. So obedience brings, number one, protection. And obedience, number two, brings provision. Somebody type provision. Uh, the, for protection, the scriptures, uh, Genesis chapter 22. Um, for provision... Our scripture is Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. And that scripture says, If ye be willing and obedient, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Uh, obedience number two, obedience brings provision. Jira provider. When you are obedient to God, God provides for you. In the book of 1 Kings, um, we have the prophet Elijah, who was on the run from Jezebel and Ahab. Uh, Elijah was running from them for a while. But it was at the brook Sharif that uh, the Lord provided for the prophet. He commanded a raven to feed the prophet while he was at the brook because he was obedient in what God had told him to do. When the brook dried up, he sent them to the widow's house and told the, he told the widow, you what, well, come on, we, we, we've been in church a long time. We know this story. Uh, he told the widow, I'm hungry. Make me something to eat. She said, well, I just got a little bit of meal left and I was going to fix that for me and my son. and We were going to go on and die. The prophet said, no, be obedient. 
Do what I'm telling you to do. Make me some first, right? And then she obeyed the prophet. And then we know the rest of the story. The meal never ran out and the oil never ran out of the cruise. We know all of that. The point is, obedience brings about provision. Isaiah 1 and 19 says, if ye are willing and obedient, that's two different things. You've got to be willing. You have to be, a, 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 you have to want it. You have to be a willing participant, right? And be obedient to the, 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 the rules of the Lord, the, the word of the Lord. You have to be obedient. He says, then you will eat the good of the land. And in light of what we have going on nowadays, today's time, it, it, it does not seem like there's anything good happening. Doesn't seem like it. If you watch the news every day, it's, it's just doom and gloom. Bad news after bad news after bad news. But I trust in the word of the Lord that says, I shall eat the good of the land. Even in this, even in pandemic, I will eat the good of the land. I believe it because of obedience. And I want to implore you guys in this time of crises, don't stop being obedient to God. Don't stop. Because we don't we, we know where we've been, right? But we don't know where we're going. We don't know what's ahead. We don't know what's ahead. But I declare unto God that if you remain obedient, God will provide for you. He will provide for you. He will provide for your family. He'll provide for your house. Amen. He would not have said it if he was not going to do it. So number one, obedience brings protection. Number two, obedience brings provision. And number three, my final point is that obedience brings peace. Somebody type peace in the comments. Peace, peace, peace. Obedience brings uh, protection provision, and peace. Amen. The scripture uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, this is the New Living Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. The King James Version, I believe, says it surpasses all understanding and his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4 uh, verses 6 and 7 in the New Living Translation. Amen. You know, when, when you've been obedient to God, uh, you don't you don't lose it. You don't lose it. Um, when. Everybody else is going crazy. You know, you don't you don't go crazy with them when everybody else has lost it. You don't lose it. You 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 keep your cool, right? Um, you're concerned. Now, I'm not saying that you're not concerned. You are concerned, but you don't we don't we're not supposed to act like we don't have God on our side because we do. So when when the world has gone turned topsy turvy, when they're acting silly in the grocery stores, acting crazy, you know, in other places. We don't lose it because we are, we've been obedient to God. Therefore, we have the peace of God. Amen. We're not getting depressed because of the news. We have the peace of God, man. We have the peace of God and the peace of God passes all understanding. People will not understand how we can remain so calm in the midst of calamity. It's because I have the peace of God. I have the peace of God. Come on, declare that over yourself in the comments. I have the peace of God. Amen. So, you know, the, the scripture says, thank him for what he's already done. Amen. When, when you have the peace of God, you, I mean, you know, you, you can just begin to think back on some of the awesome and wonderful things that God has done for you personally, for you. And it, it'll bring a, such a spirit of gratitude, right? 
It'll bring gratitude. It'll bring peace to you. And because you can think back on what he's done and you, you say to yourself, man, while everybody's going crazy, I still haven't went without a meal. Come on. I, I still have a roof over my head. My lights are still on. I still have food to eat. Come on. The peace of God. The peace of God. It passes all understanding. Amen. So you, 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 you have to think back. I like to say from time to time, take a look at God's resume in your life. Has he ever let you down? No, he has not. And he won't start now. Amen. Because we're obedient to him. Because we're obedient to his word. Amen. He will not let us down. Amen. Tell him what you want. Tell God. In, in this time, in these crises, when you talk to him for yourself, tell him what you want and rest in his peace. That's what you got to do. That's what we have to do. Times are hard, yes, but we've been obedient. We've been obedient to God. So therefore, we don't fear. We don't worry. We don't fret. We don't lose it. We don't go crazy because we've been obedient. And the obedience that we have shown, obedience will bring us provision. Our obedience will bring us protection. Our obedience will bring us peace. Amen. So I just wanted to really drop that on you guys today because it was heavy on me. Amen. That I want us to remain obedient. I don't care what nobody else is doing. I don't care what the next person is doing. I don't care what the next church is doing. I don't care what the next city, state, country is doing. It's all about a decision that you're going to make. I don't know about you, but I will remain obedient. I will remain obedient. This is not the time to give up on the word of God. This is not the time to give up on God. This is not the time. It, we, right now, this is when we need to draw closer. Amen. The Bible says, he said, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. If you come closer, I'll come closer. And that's what we need. Be obedient. Be obedient. The obedience, your obedience, amen, it brings provision. Obedience brings protection. And obedience brings peace. Amen. I want you to meditate on that. If you need the scriptures again, just inbox me or text me. I will give them to you. <coughs> and one last thing, and I'm getting off of here because I forget to keep water every time I do this. I, they always tell me, you need some water because you talk too much. I know. <laughs> um, in this hour, whatever church you're from, um, this is not the time to pull back in your giving also. I'm not one of those guys that talks about giving a lot because that turns people off when you talk about that a lot. It does. Um, and so I'm not going to dwell on it. I just want to encourage you to keep paying your tithe, keep paying your offering to your local church because we need it at this time. Amen. The church, even though we're not in there, bills still have to be paid. So amen. And be a blessing to your pastors. Amen. Let's not forget about our pastors and our leaders. Amen. So we want to keep being obedient in that regard. Um, I thank the Lord that I have everything that I need. I, I, I have what I need and I thank the Lord for that. He provides for me um, and I am grateful. So let's keep our heads up. Let's stay encouraged. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for the world. Pray for our government officials. Pray for our president. Amen. And remember that you will remain obedient. You, 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 you. You will say that to yourself. I will remain obedient. Amen. Because my obedience brings protection. My obedience brings provision. And my obedience brings peace. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for self-checkout. We talked about obedience. Self-checkout is where we take an honest look at what's in our hearts, minds, and spirits. And today in our hearts, 
was obedience. And that is something that we will re keep in our cards, the spirit of obedience. Thank you for joining Self Checkout. If you don't mind, share this video with someone else. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.